Hello everyone, N2CUA here, Randy. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, this video I want to do for you today is a supplemental video to a video already created by Al W2AEW. He did a video, I believe the title was How to Use a Scope to Determine Length of Coax, something like that. So if you want to search that on YouTube, you'll find it. You need to watch that video before you understand this one, unless you're already familiar with the topic of uh, doing a poor man's TDR or time domain reflectometer. What I wanted to show was that in his video, he says that um, when you have a piece of coax with a characteristic impedance, in our case 50 ohms, and you send a pulse from a function generator up that coax and it reaches an open at the other end of the coax, that high impedance will send a reflected wave back down the coax, which is, you know, we're as ham radio operators used to that concept, which is where we get SWR from, or VSWR. Uh, back down the coax, it'll come back to the input of the scope and add to the signal that's already present at the scope. <coughs> so it has an additive effect. And then you can measure the time difference between the start of that pulse and the start of that additional uh, energy. And that time run through calculations for time and frequency, velocity factor of the coax, you can determine the length of the coax, yada yada. Um, the thing that I found that was interesting was, okay, so we're saying that energy is reflected back down the coax, so that's great, but I want to see it. I, I want to know, I want to see something on my scope that says, yep, that really is happening. I thought it'd be an interesting video. So right now what we're looking at on my scope, it's a Rigel DS1102E, is just the rise time of a uh, pulse sitting at uh, 82 kilohertz with a 50, 50 duty cycle. <coughs> Um, it's important when you use a pulse to do this that it has a relatively good fast rise time because there's a lot of uh, high frequency energy in, a ri in the rise time. Okay, um, so I've already got a length of coax. It's a really long length of coax. It makes it easier for the demonstration. Um, and also a side note for L's video was that if you're going to stick to lengths of coax under a couple hundred feet, uh, using 100 kilohertz and a 50-50 due to cycle is fine. If you start playing with the pulse width um, or increasing the frequency too much and you narrow that pulse that you're using too much, you might mask that reflection and get inaccurate results, so keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to go ahead and connect this up. Um, and right now, too, I just want to say, I've got, um, this is a 50 ohm termination that's sitting on here now, so because the input to the scope is in the mega ohms. And so the source impedance of my Generator is 50 ohms, so I have to match that at the scope end and also match the coax. So I'm going to be sending the uh, pulse down here in a minute. So let's go ahead and connect the coax. <coughs> so I'm just going to show you what Al showed you first, just to basically to start from that point. Okay. So um, my pulse generator, <coughs> function generator, doesn't have enough uh, drive to. Uh, amplitude wise to make this make sense but as far as the actual pulse and the reflected wave from the Mac it does. So you have the pulse with starting here, the rise time of the pulse, hits this point, it's sent down, sent down the coax, then I have an open at the other end of the coax, it's like 400 feet long. That energy is reflected back down the coax and is added to the energy already present uh, at the scope because this pulse width is long enough. I mean, it went all the way off here before. So it's adding to that and showing you this. And this time here is about the same as this time here because that's the length. It's, again, it, it equates to the length of the coax and how much of that energy is reflected back down for how long, actually. Um, <coughs> so my thought was, again, how do I know that that's really reflect reflected energy other than it's adding to it. So what I had done was, and I'm going to do it in a minute here, is I decreased the pulse width, I changed the duty cycle so that just at the time that this energy that's reflected back down the coax is going to add to the energy, that pulse is going to go away because I'm going to put the fall time of the pulse right here. 
Okay, so if this is truly energy being reflected back down the coax, it should still be present on the waveform. It would be at a lower amplitude now because it's not adding two, it's just whatever is left coming down the coax. But that would still, in fact, be the reflected energy we're looking at. So that's what I wanted to try. So I'm going to do that now. Um, going to bring this down to, I think it's 11%. And watch what happens. Nope, not quite far enough. 10%. There we go. Okay. So now what I'm saying is, again, um, this is the point at which the reflected energy is coming back down the coax. And if what I said is true, and this energy from the pulse, back from this point forward, is truly the energy being reflected only back down the coax, if I remove this cable, then this pulse, original pulse, should be right here. See what I'm saying? The original pulse width. So I'm going to do that now. And we'll see what happens here. And there you go. It's ex you know, exactly the same. <coughs> so that energy that's left, that's remaining over here, is the actual energy being reflected back down the coax. And that's really all I wanted to show you. Thank you for watching. It was fun. I enjoyed this. It took me a little while to set it up. And uh, thank you to L W two A E W. He has some amazing videos on his uh, YouTube channel. You should really check him out. He's done a lot of them. A lot of them in electronics with scopes and um, just just a lot. And uh, and really good. He's a really good instructor. Um, I wish I could do videos and present them as well as he does. He's really good. Anyway, seven threes to everyone. Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you uh, on the next video.